What you're looking at right now is the monstrous list of the built-in default keyboard shortcuts in VS Code. So you can see here on the right, there are tons and tons, 554 as of my last count, which is way too many for me to memorize, probably too many for most of you. So what I'm gonna do is run through some of my favorites, some of the ones that I think you'll get the most use out of. In other news, my React course is out. If you wanna check it out, there's a coupon in the description. Uh, I'm also getting a lot of questions about what I'm going to teach next, what are the big topics that I'm thinking about, and there's kind of a big list. I'm going to have courses on all of these topics in the next couple of months. TypeScript, a lot more Node.js content, GraphQL, Vue, Redux. So these will be out uh, sometime in 2019. I'm actually going to launch a lot of this at the same time. You'll hear more about it. I'll give you some updates on this YouTube channel as I make more progress. A lot of you like to keep up to date with my cats and my dog. Well, I have some new pets. I'll introduce them at the end of the video. They are not cats, they're not dogs, some mystery creature. All right, let's get started. In the description for this video, you'll find a link to the notes I put together. They're pretty sparse notes. It's really just a couple of tables that contain shortcuts in the Mac version and the PC version, as well as a quick description. And I've grouped them into different categories. Uh, I'm not gonna run through every single one of these. I'm going to try and just hit the highlights, the most important pieces. And the last thing I'll add is I am using a, a nice little bit of software on here. If I type a command, you can see it down here. I just did command shift P and you can see what I'm typing. Now this is a Mac, so unfortunately it will only display the Mac version, but almost all of the commands are direct translation where instead of a command key on a PC, you would use control, control shift P, command shift P. All right. So why don't we start with this one? What does command shift P do? It brings up the command palette. So if you're not familiar with the command palette, this is a simple one, uh, but it's also really, really useful. Command shift P opens it up and it opens this little text box for you to start typing. It gives you some recently used commands as well as a list of alphabetical commands. So there's pretty much nothing you can't do from the command palette. You can work with extensions. You can access all of your keyboard shortcuts. Um, you can move to new file. You can initialize a Git repository, work with ESLint, uh, open up the terminal. You can see all of these, all the different things you can do here. Uh, but just to show you an example, that list of shortcuts I was looking at, this is how I got there. So you can do it through a menu, but if you just type shortcuts, this shows you the default list of shortcuts. Also, uh, you can do things like I'm using material theme, that's an extension. I can set an accent color, which I normally would do by going into preferences and scrolling down. Let's change it to, uh, where's purple? There we go. It's kind of hard to see there, but this just changed. My accent color is now purple. All right, so that's a simple one, the command palette, but I recommend you get comfortable and familiar with that. Next up, uh, another very quick one. Open up your preferences with command comma. So you could get there by opening command palette and then typing pref. And you can go to all the different pieces, like your color theme, for example, and you can set it here. But if you wanna to get to all of your preferences at once, command comma will take you here. And this is nice if you're trying to edit a bunch of things uh, at the same time. And that's all I'll say about it for now. All right, so the next one, this one I use all the time, not just when I'm changing preferences or something, Command Shift T or Control Shift T will reopen a closed editor. So a lot of the time uh, I'll be working across a bunch of files. As you can see here, this project is pretty large and I don't wanna leave a bunch of them open, it drives me crazy. So I'll minimize or close some with Command W and then I realize, shoot, I actually need to go back and add something. Command Shift T. I don't need to go hunt around for the file with my mouse or search for it in the command palette. I can just do Command Shift T. And if I close a couple of them, let's do that, I can reopen both of them by hitting Command Shift T two times. So that one's really useful. I'm gonna skip over this one. This one's great. It opens a file in Finder or Explorer so you can find where the actual file is located and drag it to the trash or zip it or whatever you need to do with it. This one, Command K and then Z, is something called Zen Mode. It opens up a nice minimal interface. The reason I wanted to show it to you is mainly because the shortcut is kind of odd. Both of these here are called chord shortcuts, like a musical chord, and basically you play more than one note at a time. So you type Command K, which I'm gonna do right now, and keep your eye down here at the bottom left, 
it says waiting for second key of the chord. So then I'll type Z and there we go. So I'm not holding them all at once. I'm doing command K and then another letter. And then to get out of here, escape twice. Okay, next up, toggling the sidebar. So this one is really useful and very quick. Uh, I do this all the time when I'm teaching. This is quite distracting. Also, if you have your editor split with a couple windows going, the sidebar takes up a ton of space. So you can minimize it with Command-B or open it back up. Next up, Command-P. So this is called Quick Open. It's an easy way to get to a file. And I use this all the time. So as you can see here, this project is quite large. I'm in a file called clipboard.ts. If I want to go to a file, let's go to the header file. I can do Command P and type header. And there we go. I go right there. It doesn't matter if it's already open. As long as I have this directory open with my entire project, it's nice and easy. Let's open up the sorting file. There it is. Okay. Now we move on to a new group of commands. These all have to do with editing. So I'm going to show a couple of them at once. This first one, which is option arrow, so option up or option down, uh, it helps move a line up or down. The current line that you're on, you can move it around. And then if you add in shift, it actually functions as a copy. So you can copy a new version of that line above or below. So I'll show that to you now. Uh, if I hold option on this line and down arrow or up arrow, I can move this bit of code around. So that's useful. And if you did happen to have a bunch of stuff selected, you can also move it as a group. And if we do the same thing, but we hold shift, shift option down or up, I am now copying that line above or below. So if I wanted you know, another version of this global plugins component in React, shift option up, copies it above. And the same thing below. Next up is command shift K or control shift K, which deletes the entire line that you're currently on. So wherever my cursor is, if I do command shift K, it deletes the entire line. I don't have to select the line first and then delete it. Um, I don't need to use multiple commands. It's just command shift K and it works wherever you are in that line. Here's another quick one, command up or down arrow. On a PC, this one is actually a little different. You don't use the arrows. Uh, you might actually, but according to the documentation for VS Code where I found the PC equivalents, you use Control Home and Control End. But I would try it with the arrows as well. So here I have a sort of long file. If I need to import something that I forgot to at the top, Command Up Arrow takes me all the way to the top, and Command Down takes me all the way to the bottom. And I already showed this, but if you're in the middle of a line, Command Right takes you to the end, the right side, and Command Left takes you to the start. I'm going to skip over this one for commenting. A lot of you probably know that, command forward slash. Uh, this one, though, is really, really useful. Command shift backslash or control shift backslash. And what this does is it jumps to the matching bracket, whether it's a curly brace or square brackets, parens. So suppose that I want to add something in right after this class ends. So I could scroll and try and find it, or I can use the shortcut command shift backslash. Now it shows up as a pipe uh, in this piece of software I have, and that's because I'm holding shift and on my keyboard backslash shift gives you that pipe character. So if I hit it again, it takes me to the opening bracket, to the closing, so it basically just takes you to the matching bracket. And just to show you here, uh, like with this parenthesis right here, if I do command shift slash, it takes me to the closing paren right there. So that one's really useful, especially when you have long nested pieces of, of code with a bunch of brackets and you need to quickly figure out where the matching one is. So next up, we've got a group that has to do with selecting things and having multiple cursors. So this is really, really useful stuff. Uh, the first two are kind of linked together. So if you hold down Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC and you click, you can spawn multiple cursors. And Command U can be used if you make a mistake, if you need to undo one of these cursor operations. So I'll show you a quick example of that. Let's say that I have Monaco as something that I want to update. I want to change that lowercase m to an uppercase m in a couple places. So the naive solution would be to hold Option and find the next example of that. I now have two cursors, one up here, one flashing down here. I could keep doing this manually and that would work, I now have those cursors. But also, if I hold Option again, let's say I mess it up, 
and I click in the wrong place. I can undo that with command U. And that just undid that last cursor. It also jumped my screen for some reason, but uh, that cursor is no longer here. So now I can have multiple cursors and start typing things or change those to be uppercase M instead of lowercase. Now that's kind of the simplistic way of using multiple cursors because there are some much nicer features if you're trying to edit a bunch of lines in a row or edit a bunch of words uh, and replace them or update them in the same way. So first, Control-D, Command-D on a Mac is a really, really useful one as well. What it does is it expands your selection to the current word. So I just hit Command-D and it selects Monaco. So that's cool, I can delete the whole word. But also, if I keep pressing it again and again, I'm now selecting all instances of Monaco. Now it's important to note that this actually is grabbing Monaco up here somewhere, where is that? Where it's case insensitive, this is different with the uppercase M, um, so it is grabbing that. But if I wanted to take all falses and turn them to be true, I could one at a time, I could keep pressing Command D and eventually select them all and then change them to be true. There's better ways of doing that as well. Uh, but this is nice if you're just trying to update a couple things at once. So Command D, I also use that often if I wanna just delete the current word I'm in and replace it with null, for example, instead of undefined. So the next one is Shift Option I, and this will add in a cursor at the end of every selected line. So as an example here, I need to add commas to the end of these lines that are in an object. So if I select them and do Option Shift I, I now have a cursor at the end of each one of those lines. So that's really useful if you want to add a bunch of cursors in somewhere uh, to make sort of a mass update. And there's another way of doing this where you don't have to select first and then hold a command. You can drag a box. It's called box selection and you hold shift option and drag your mouse or shift alt and drag your mouse on a PC. So if I do the same thing, Let's say I want to delete all of these commas. I can hold shift option and then drag my mouse and add as many cursors as I want. Every line in this box. So it is a box. So if I go this way, for example, I'm missing the end of those lines if I shrink it down, but I draw that selection and I get a bunch of cursors. And now I can delete all those commas, which is a horrible idea. It ruins my code. All right, so the last chunk here has to do with finding and replacing. So the first one is Command F or Control F. And this finds information, finds matches in a single file. So let's say I wanna find all strings. I can do Command D, Command F, and it automatically fills in string because I had that word selected. There are a lot of features to VS Code's find and replace. We can toggle on and off case sensitivity. There's also a shortcut for that. We can toggle on and off matching the entire word. So this would have helped us with that Monaco issue where I was trying to match Monaco, the word, but I also matched a substring that contained Monaco. And then you can also use a regular expression. Now, all three of those have shortcuts. I just don't use them often enough, uh, honestly, to remember them. So we can find things and you can toggle between them, left and right, by using Command G and Command Shift G if you wanted to. So this takes me to next commands or, this, or the next match and the previous match if I hold Shift. And if I wanna replace things, I have a couple of options. To replace things within the single file that I'm in, I can click this arrow. I'm sure there's a command for that as well. No, maybe not. And I can type in, let's do string in all caps with a bunch of exclamation points. And now if I wanna activate this replacement, I have two choices. Replace the current match that I'm looking at or replace all. Usually I end up doing replace all, which is command, option, enter. And there we go. I replaced all lowercase strings with uppercase strings and a bunch of exclamation points. Now, if I wanted to replace across all files, it's a little different. That was only working in a single file. And that brings me to this command here, which is Command Shift H or Control Shift H. Let's do that now, Command Shift H. And it opens up a search on the left-hand side. So it's just a way of getting to this menu. You could also just click on that little magnifying glass and we can search for something. Let's look for Monaco again. And I got 354 results across 26 files. If I wanna replace all of them with something else, like Monaco in all caps with more exclamation points, uh, I can do that. 
And then to make it all take effect, to actually replace across all of those files, I can click or I can do Command Option Enter again. So I'm going to do that. And then it prompts me, are you sure you want to do that? 354 occurrences. I'll do it. And it's going to take a moment. Did it finish? I think it just finished. And now if we do a search for Monaco 354, we can find an example right there or another one right here. All right, so that's how you can find and replace across all your files. Now, I didn't go into regular expressions. Uh, there's a whole lot that you can do instead of just matching direct matches, but that's probably another video. So this list is by no means comprehensive. Uh, it's just some of my favorites, some of the ones I end up using the most often. And basically, I recommend that you pick a couple at a time to try and learn. And remember, when you're trying to learn these shortcuts, it's always slower at the beginning. The whole point of them is to make your life better, more efficient, make it so you can write code faster. But at the beginning, you probably need to look things up, either print out a cheat sheet or keep it open somewhere. It might take another second or two, but then after you use that shortcut a couple of times, it usually sticks. So I highly recommend you just try learning some of these. And at the very least, something like the command palette can really help you out. Because let's say you can't remember how to do uh, replace. You can type replace right here and it's going to open up either replace or replace in files. And there we go. Back at the start of the video, I mentioned I have a couple new pets. My new pets yes. are four baby Want chicks. They're gonna be my chickens one day. Finish building a coop for them. Uh, so I'm just raising them inside for a couple weeks. They're very, very cute. As you can see here, they make a lot of adorable noises. Uh, they make a mess. <laughs> they spread their food absolutely everywhere. They go to the bathroom on everything. But they also fall asleep in my hands and snore, and it's really, really cute. So here they are. Um, I'm sure they're not going to be this cute for very long. I will update you as they grow up and start laying eggs. If you have any questions, please leave a comment on this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, uh, do all that annoying stuff. All right, I appreciate it. I'll have a new video coming out very soon, actually this same week, on a completely different topic. All right.